name is Jerry Oy. I'm an application specialist here at Applied Engineering. Uh, and today I'm going to spend roughly about 45 minutes or so kind of going over what's new with the 2022 Inventor software. Um, I know 2022 has been out for a little bit of time now, and there's been some other other companies that have done what's new. So um, I'm going to kind of fly through some of these slides. And then when I go into the demonstration within the 2022 software, um, a majority of the time I think I'm going to spend uh, directly going through the uh, the new tool called Model States. Uh, model States takes the place now of uh, level of detail. They, they did away with level of detail in 2022. So uh, most of you have probably used that in the past and the older versions of Inventor where you can suppress out um, components and, and such, but um, that is no more in 2022. And now they are called Model States and I'll spend a bit of time going through uh, that today in the What's New demonstration. All right, so uh, next slide here is kind of goes through some of the different improvements within the new software. So as stated, model, model states takes the place of LOD or level of details. So think of model states as uh, being able to take a part file or even an assembly file and create many different configurations of it. Um, in, in regards to a part file, you could have some features be suppressed or unsuppressed. Uh, maybe you want some uh, a pattern within your, your part model to either increase or decrease depending on which model state or I call it configuration that you call upon. And then in regards to model state in the assembly environment, you can suppress or unsuppress um, sub-assemblies uh, as well as you know maybe may change the quantity or whatever sub-assemblies and uh, things of that nature. So uh, pretty cool new addition to the inventor software model states. Uh, Revit interoperability. So a little bit more, more intuitive now within the new software as far as being able to work across the different two different platforms. Um, you can export your inventor files into a Revit, Revit file type and then use it in your Revit uh, software. If at any time your inventor model changes that you're actually utilizing within that Revit file, um, you'll be able to update it within Revit and then see those changes happen. Uh, productivity and performance. Uh, I'm not going to really do a demonstration on that because it, as everybody knows, it's all really dependent on what kind of uh, graphics card you have, um, how robust your computer is and uh, things of that nature. So um, it's all going to be dependent on each individual's personal computer. Uh, drawing environment. Um, not really a whole lot has changed there. Uh, a couple of the things that, that come to mind is now when you go to dimension um, on your drawing and you're crossing over a center mark or a center line, uh, Inventor will now put a gap around that dimension. So that dimension isn't right smack dab on top of that center line. The center line or center mark will be broken. And then uh, if you ever do shaded views within your drawing, um, you can have your shaded view look just like it does in the model environment. It's not just one static type of uh, shaded representation of your model. Uh, and then an installation and deployment. Um, with each version of Inventor that comes out, Autodesk does its best to kind of improve on the installation and deployment so that there's less chance for uh, user error, uh, better user interaction. Um, so as I, as I mentioned in the part environment, you now have what's called model uh, states. So a couple different ways that you can work with model states, manufacturing processes, maybe show, show a raw material and then through the different model states, you can show that there's maybe some machining um, processes that are happening or in, in the case of a weldment, I guess you could show maybe a weld call-ups or, or what have you within that weldment. And then family of parts, um, I think a family of parts and configurations, right? So you could have 12 different configurations within your part, part file. And then depending on which model state you're calling out for, that piece part can be longer, wider, thicker. Uh, you know, as mentioned, maybe you have a uh, pattern of holes on here. You can have those holes change. So depending on which model state I'm calling out for, I have three holes or four holes or five holes. And then in regards to sheet metal environment, 
um, you can show all the different stages of bending each sheet metal part. So basically all you're really doing there is you're taking a, uh, your sheet metal part and you're suppressing out the different stages within your model tree, right? So if you if you have a certain stage suppressed in your model tree, you might not see a, a certain bend, you know, a bend up or a bend down. So um, just show the different operations there. All right, so here's a quick little video showing the assembly model states. So you can create many different assembly configurations or maybe uh, weldment preparations, alternate assembly uh, orientations, and, and so on. And you can see in the model uh, browser there, there is no longer any level of detail folder. So uh, quite honestly, personally, I'm I, uh, really looking forward to the model states for both parts and assemblies. Okay. Uh, in regards to the assembly environment, there is now a new function where you can right click on your in your model tree on, you know, in the case of these, these blue uh, motors here, or hydraulic pumps, you can create what's called um, instant properties. You can right click on them and go into instant properties. And then let's say you want, these are all the exact same part, but you end up tagging them with a different part number or a tag number or what have you. Well, if you do that, then Inventor is going to assume that even though they're the exact same part within your parts list or your build material, you want those broken out into their own, own unique part file. And that's exactly what's uh, shown in the upper right example here. If you did not set a instance, instant property within your model tree, then this would show up as a quantity of four as opposed to a quantity of one of each. Okay? And then if you do have instant property on any one of your components within your assembly file, you'll see a dot um, coming right after the, the file. And that just signifies that you have a custom property tied to the, those parts there. Uh, simplification improvement. No longer is there what's called shrink wrap. They now call it just simplify. So really, I guess there is shrink wrap. They just don't call it shrink wrap anymore. They call it simplify. So that Simplify browser is now, uh, you can dock it on the left side of your screen, just like you would with your extrude command, fillet command, revolve command, and so on. So if you kind of look through the different stages within this dialog box, uh, you can set what model state you want. So that's, remember, that's uh, what's new, this 2022 iteration of Inventor. Uh, what design view do you want to use? Positional representation, uh, envelope. So here you can, specify um, if you want all your different components in your assembly to uh, be merged as like one solid body, that'd be that first button there. I guess the second button would be, I want to keep all those individual components is one individual component. Uh, so they're, they'll be all their own component. And then that very last button would take your, let's just call it 12 different components and merge them all, all into one. So you're, you're taking out some of the details of your component in order for you to export that to a file type, and then you could send that to a vendor or a customer or whatever, and that way they won't be able to see any of the detail that goes into that assembly file. Uh, just kind of scrolling down here, there's an exclude component uh, panel here, so you can either remove or include various components within your assembly for uh, exporting out. And you can see that there's some details here, remove details for holes, fills, chamfers. So do you want to uh, exclude it or do you want to include it? Okay. And then you have a output, output operation, depending on what you're simplifying, if it's an assembly or part, then you just need to specify what template do you want to use there. Uh, and then where do you want to save it out? If there's a location for where you want to save it out to in regards to an assembly environment. Um, what do you want that bomb structure to be? All right, uh, inventor and Revit interoperability. So um, in the past, yeah, you have been able to utilize inventor files within, within Revit. Um, was a little bit cumbersome. Um, now when you go into your file dropdown menu, you can see that little orange file button. Uh, you can click on that and you can do an export and then there'll be a spot where you can select to export to a Revit file extension. And then as mentioned, if you're using that inventor part in your Revit file, um, 
and then you go to make a change within the native inventor file, uh, as soon as you go back to Revit, there'll be a uh, kind of a little flag that comes up and you can kind of click on that and update your inventor file that is in Revit, and then you'll see that change happen. So uh, improved upon the Revit to inventor interoperability. All right, next thing is Inventor and Fusion 360. This is this is pretty uh, spectacular. So if I'm in Inventor file and I have created a part file, and then maybe I want to send that to Fusion. Um, some of you that that use Fusion, you, you may know that there's some pretty dynamite uh, CNC um, functionality within the Fusion software. So you know, I maybe I take a, a casting that I design in Inventor, and then I want to send it to Fusion in order to um, you know, create my machining operations in, in it. Um, so once you send it to Fusion, it'll get placed in your, your folder within your data panel. Um, I'll be able to open that up. Natively is a Inventor IPT file, just like it shows there. Now, if I go back to Inventor and make a change to it, I can send it to Fusion once again as a second iteration. And then uh, within the Fusion software, I would then see a link icon show up in my, my ribbon panel. And then I can click on that link and that will then update my Fusion once again to whatever changes that I had made in the inventor file. Uh, some other, there's some other file types that have been added to inventor as far as exporting out. Um, I haven't worked with any of these, the QIF 3.0 file type. Uh, you can utilize the task scheduler to export your file out to a, a JT, I guess, uh, file extension. Um, I would say they're probably not two file extensions, but uh, Inventor, every version that comes out with Inventor, they're always adding additional file types as far as what export options do you have. Uh, the next few slides I'll go through pretty quick. I want to get into demonstration uh, sooner than later here, but uh, you can see that there's there's a kind of a, a system here. Uh, going back to Inventor 2018, um, they spent most of their time on improving the graphics and, and drawing environment. Uh, 2019 assemblies, drawings, and graphics. Uh, you can see most of these different iterations, assemblies, and graphics. Um, they see just about all of them, I guess, with the exception of 2018. But they've improved on the assemblies and graphics with each version that has, has came out. And then some of those other uh, versions, they came out with AnyCAD technology in 2020. That was a pretty cool addition to the software. So you can bring in non-native files, uh, keep their same native file extension and uh, use them in your inventor designs. So every version of inventor, they always improve on the, the graphics. Uh, try to speed up, speed up the graphics, and you know, being able to rotate models and, and things of that, that nature around without having to have any uh, jitteriness or whatever, right? Uh, visual styles improved on visual styles, uh, constraints improved on the, the the speed of constraining components. Uh, opening and closing large file types. Most of you probably work with with maybe thousands of different parts within an assembly file. And in some cases, those files might take a little bit of time to open up and um, the, the speed of opening those files has improved. Uh, getting into the fillet command. So now in the drop down menu for a fillet, now they have separated out the face fillet and full round fillet into their own tool buttons. Okay. And those fillet browser, the browser is now, you're able to dock it to the left side of your screen. So a lot of the same functionality is what you have seen in the older versions of Inventor. It's just that they have now added it so that you can have it docked to your panel, just like I mentioned earlier, the extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, and so on. Okay. And then off to the right here, you see a little ribbon panel for the uh, constant radius fillet, uh, variable fillet. You can do a, a corner operation. So if you have three edges and you want that, uh, the shared point where those three edges meet to, to look a certain way. And then there's some filters here for edge selection mode, loop selection mode, uh, mode or 
by feature. I want to fill up by feature. Okay. Uh, assembly constraints. So a new addition to your assembly environment is now within your model tree. You'll be able to more easily know what components are fully defined versus what components are underdefined uh, versus potentially you know a component that doesn't have any constraints added, added whatsoever. Okay. So if you click on your your three horizontal lines, or you can go down to display preferences and then uh, turn on the show constraint state. So looking in the browser, any component that has a solid dot that represents that that component is fully defined, meaning I have now removed all degrees of freedom. You have a circle that is uh, essentially a hollow circle. So that means that there's still some constraints that have not been applied. In the case of fasteners, a lot of people don't fully define fasteners. I can take that bolt and I can spin it around in the hole. Okay. So. Uh, and then now, finally, in 2022, Inventor Dart theme is now no longer in beta. So, fully released. If you go into your uh, tools and application options and then your colors tab, you'll see that the Dart theme is no longer in beta. And it goes across the different platforms as well. So, if I uh, use do any iLogic programming, it is now in, in iLogic. Uh, so you can see here the dialog boxes are now dark, right? It's not just the inventor interface that's that's dark theme. Uh, even the dialog boxes as, as well are. All right, so uh, in the drawing environment, you can see in this quick video here, if you're adding a dimension, and you're going over the top of, in this case, center line, it, it breaks it so that you can easily see that dimension. And then below there, in regards to the shaded mode, depending on what lighting style you're using within your model, when you go to your drawing, your lighting style and your shaded view is going to update to be represented the exact same as the way it's shaded in your model environment. Uh, camera views is another thing that, that they have added so you can you can save various different camera views that you can then use in your drawing environment. So installation and deployment. So now they streamline the process of installing all your different flavors of your Autodesk softwares that uh, you may have uh, purchased. So uh, minimal configuration. Uh, as you're installing the various softwares, uh, basically it's it's installation wizard and you just click on what softwares you want and then uh, it will install in the background and uh, there's less chance, I guess, for a user error. And uh, just some additional resources here, just some various links you can uh, kind of take note of. Uh, I would advise everyone to utilize the Inventor form if you're ever having an issue with the Inventor software. Uh, no matter if it's part environment assembly, drawings, uh, presentation files, and so on, take advantage of the uh, inventor form. And you'll be able to hopefully figure out your issues. There's Autodesk Idea Station. So a lot of the improvements that I'll show you in my demonstration in, in a few seconds here, um, a lot of the improvements to the Inventor 2022 software is from all of you guys, the customers. You guys go to the Autodesk Idea Station. Uh, you post some sort of improvement that you would like to see in the Inventor software. And then depending on how many kudos that idea gets, that's kind of takes precedence above some of the other ones that may not have gotten as many kudos. So uh, kind of keep that in mind there. All right, so I'm just gonna pop over to Inventor here and then I'm gonna go through, let's go through just the uh, dark theme first. And then, um, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna spend most of my time in the model state environment. So I just have this part file up here. Uh, most of you in 2021 and older have used the beta dark theme, uh, I would assume anyway. So if I go to the color tab here, um, you can go into the UI theme drop down here. And 2021 said said dark and then it said beta either before or after it. 
but now it's in full full release. So it doesn't matter what uh, dialog box I have up if I bring up if I bring up iLogic here. You can see the background is also black as well. So uh, a little bit more easier on the eyes. So if you don't want a tongue dark theme, then just go into your color tab and uh, set it back to the, the normal where you have the white background or a green background or what have you. Now I'm going to bring up a drawing here, okay? And then go over um, camera states. So let's say I wanted to change this particular view to some, some oddball uh, orientation, right? So I'll right click and I'll just uh, bring up that assembly file, right? And then maybe I want to go to a different type of isometric view or something, something like so, okay? So then I'll just uh, go into my view here, right click, down new camera view, uh, save current camera. And then if I pop over to my drawing, I'll just double click in that view. And now there's this kind of a gear icon here, view settings to include in the drawing. So I'll click on that and it's already checked for the camera view. So all I need to do is just click on OK. And then you can already see that I have changed the orientation of my, my view here. So they call that camera view. So at any time you can go into your uh, assembly environment and change your camera view and then double click in your view and your drawing, select on that gear icon. And then if that's already checked, just go ahead and click on OK and then you'll have a new camera view. You know, another option, this is kind of off the subject a little bit, is you can certainly use your view cube to kind of reorientate your uh, your view there if you wanted to, but this is a saved camera view. So you can see that if I'm clicking on it, it's not allowing me to do anything right now. Okay. Uh, let's go back into here once and uncheck that. Now you can see that with that unchecked, then I could change it to some other orientation. All right, uh, going back to this part file. So I'm going to go and should be a drawing. Just going to draw in here. So let's just uh, right click and create a drawing view. And I'll hit on the uh, center lines and center marks. So view of that front view. And then from there, I'll go into my annotate tab and add some center marks and center lines. Just something like so. I'm going to come over to this one and do a center mark. Okay. So now off of here, I'll just uh, click on my dimension tool. And not to say most users slap their dimensions inside their part, usually you're off to the side, but let's just say that I did that. And you can see that as soon as you have placed it, uh, Inventor takes that center line and breaks it off to either side of that dimension. Okay? And that goes the same with your center marks as well. So just click on that circle. And then if I purposely put it on top of a center mark, it's now broken. And that, that 35 millimeter value can be easily seen there. All right, um, let's actually go into an assembly file. So I have this assembly file, right? And I'm gonna hit on instant properties, okay? So let's say uh, these two parts, if I look at my model tree, you can see what the part number is, 773. So I'm gonna right click on that, and then I'm gonna go down to instance properties, and maybe I want those, those parts are the exact same parts. So there should be like a quantity of two of those, those parts, 773. But I want to force them to be completely different parts within my parts list or my build material structure. So all I'm doing here is I'll just enter part number and then I'm going to give each of them their own unique part number. 
And then now you can see right after it, there's a dot that signifies that that particular park has a instant property, a custom property, okay? So right click, right click on this second one and do the same thing. And just make sure, I need to make sure that I give it the exact same property here. So just say 12-140 for that part number. And we'll put a dot right after it. Okay. So now let's take a look in the bill material dialog box. If I scroll, should be all the way down. Now you can see that Inventor took that and added my part number column, 12 110, 12 140. Okay. Structure tab, you can see that the part number varies. Um, so yeah, just some, just a matter of finding your components in here. So here's some pillow block bearings. I could come into those parts. This is a sub assembly, but, um, I could come into a, a part that is duplicated in here and I can override those parts and custom properties to them just by right clicking and do it. instant property. You can add as many instant property as you want. And then when you do add those, uh, you'll just be let knowing that if there's a dot after it, that means that there's an instance property to it. All right, so um, I want to send this assembly file to a vendor, and I don't want them to be able to look at all the details of all the individual components. So I want to be able to simplify this assembly file, and then at that point, then I can send it to them. Okay. So from here, I'll go into scroll up here and I'll just right click on substitute. You can do it right here or you can do it in your model state and just do new substitute. I'm actually gonna go into here and do new substitute and then simplify. So no longer called shrink wrap. You can see in the ribbon panel, there's also that button right here. You can do it either way. So I'll do simplify and then um, I have some different model states, one motor, two motors, three motors. That is the uh, motors over here, and I'll show you that, that in a minute when I hit on the model states. But replace with envelope. So if I click on this, that's what you're going to get is just, just basically a big blob. Uh, I've never used that one before. It's, there's obviously no detail there. Now, if I go to something more like this, where each individual part or sub assembly uh, is going to show up as Detail will be removed from each individual component is what I was trying to say. And then you can also do, I want my entire assembly to be represented as just one part file. Here, very similar to that, it's just that each one is still its own individual part. Here, that entire assembly is all one part file. So maybe I want to, want to do that, right? And then exclude components, I can come in here and I can specify what component do I want to not be shown when I go to export. So there, there's, uh, I think it was just some, some books that are up there. So I removed three of the six books and I'm leaving three books in there, I guess. And then from there, I can uh, specify what template do I want to use and then uh, give it a, a name and then where I want to save that out, okay? And then down at the bottom, I can save this all out. It is a solid body, not showing their edges. This one is a solid body showing their edges. Uh, this will maintain each solid is a solid body just like it shows, or you can do a composite surface. So maybe I want to keep it as one solid body showing the edges. And then I can click on OK. And there is my new simplified representation of that assembly. So a lot of detail got removed, but it, you know maybe at least now it can be a, a space claim for your vendor or customer to, to use this assembly in their in their own assembly file. All right, so let's go into this part, and I'm going to cover now uh, model states in the part environment. So let's say I wanted to create multiple configurations of this one part. Um, some of you 
may be familiar with or have used quite a bit, iParts or iAssemblies. It's very similar to iParts or iAssemblies, but I guess quite honestly, um, the fact that iParts and iAssemblies saves out all the different configurations as their own model uh, as past few years when they use iParts has kind of bothered me. Um, I would rather have multiple configurations always reside in the part, in this case, the IPT file that it was created in, right? I don't wanna have it save out into their own individual piece parts. So from here, uh, I just need, need to determine how many configurations do I want. So I'll just right click and just say new a couple different times here. Let's do three times and then from here, that you can double click on it as well. And I'm going to give these some part numbers. Like so. And do one last one here. Okay. So I haven't done anything yet besides create those configurations. And you can actually go in and edit them via a spreadsheet. So that's what I'll do here in a minute. But I wanted to at least have a couple configurations here and you'll see why here in just a second. Um, but with that particular model state active, now from here, any edits that I do is only going to be for that particular model state. So I'm gonna double click and go into the sketch environment and I'll be able to change this to some other value, let's just say 500 millimeters. So I can adjust that, I can adjust my height here. Uh, maybe the width of that slotted area and the height of that slotted area, okay? And then I'm gonna go into the thickness of it and I'll change this to say 15 millimeters. Uh, and then from there, I'll click on a different one. So you can see already what just happened. Um, my master is the default dimensions that I had created this part at, right? 10-110 are the new dimensions that I had updated this part to. So this one here goes right back to, to um, the default dimensions. So now from here, I can just go in here and do the same, same thing as before modify these to some, some random value, or whatever they need to be. And I guess hopefully I don't make these the same as what they were. I'll go into that extrusion as well, change that to let's say 20. And then now let's just take a look here and see what that part looks like per configuration. If I go to this 10 112, that again will go back to looking like a master. Okay, so it's whichever one I have active. Now you can edit the different features and have them be global to all three model states if you want. There you just click on that pencil. And then now any, any edits that you do is going to be for all of those model states. But if you want it to only be for the one, and just turn that guy off, and then it's only for that one, okay? So let's just do this one one last time here. Now I'm gonna increase this up quite a bit to 800 millimeters. Let's just say 450. 25, and let's do, let's do what 375 looks like here. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna really worry about my thickness. Maybe I want my thickness to be whatever the default thickness was set to uh, prior to when I created these model states. Um, another thing that you can do with model states besides suppressing out the features, I could suppress all features if I wanted to, but I also wanna go into here and let's say, uh, let me actually go in to my holes here first. And I want to adjust this to a different value. 
right now it's tied to D54, but I'm just gonna override that and just say 250. And so I'm like, so, and I could go into my pattern if I wanted to now, and I could adjust this. So close to being centered there. You know, if I wanted to maybe say I wanted one of three here, then I'll just say two. So you can override patterns within each individual model state. So if I look at that, uh, 10 111, I get that part. Let's see what 10 110 looks like. 10 112. Okay, well, maybe 10 110, I don't want my holes to be shown. So I'll just go in and I will suppress that hole as well as the pattern. Right? And I have those other two holes up the top. So I'll right click, suppress out those features. And let's just go through those model states again. So you can override patterns in model states. You can adjust your parameter values, your dimensions within your sketch. Um, I think I said suppress out patterns. Okay, so now from here, what I can do, um, if you want to do additional model states in your part file, then I can just right click and I can say edit via the spreadsheet. It is more intuitive to go into the spreadsheet once you have created a couple different iterations. So everybody uses Excel, I would assume. So you can come in here and then I can just kind of go through here and I can say, hey, I want I want three more configurations and it does something like that. And then I can adjust these values. I thought they would have uh, given it's fine. So I'll just say 900. Okay, and that's, I'm just gonna copy these down just for the time constraints here, but. So these fields up at the top, these are your parameter names. So I, uh, ahead of time, I went into those parameter names. They, they were D0, D1, D2, and I gave them a descriptive name so that I know what I'm working with when I go into my spreadsheet here. And then from there, I can add my certain values here. Let's just grab these, oops. Grab these guys, drag those down. And all these changes that I'm making, be quite honest, I don't know if it's going to wig out my part file or not, but just I'm going to leave I'm going to leave those ones at two because I'm feeling that they're going to mess things up here. Some do small values here just to make sure that things don't go up. Uh, hole one and hole two, remember I had suppressed it in the one configuration, which was the 10 110. Um, so that's what it looks like in your spreadsheet, is, is uh, and it's just like in your eye parts. If, if you guys have worked with eye parts, that's what you do to either tell them if you want to suppress a feature out or you want to actually display it or compute it, right? So I could. Maybe grab a couple of these guys, say I want those suppressed, and then you want some other ones computed. Something like that. Okay, so I've created three additional uh, model states, right? And I gave them some unique values, some of them are, are the same. And then when you close out, you just save your changes. And then you now have additional model states. So let's just see if things are going to blow up. Hopefully not. Just based off of the dimensions that I had laid out, that's why it's this look right there, but you get the picture there. So compute versus suppress. That's why I don't see those holes in there, right? So best thing to do 
in the part environment, work with model states, uh, create a couple different model states to start off with. And then that way, when you go in and add, edit via the spreadsheet, you will already have the various fields filled in there for you. Okay. All right, so let's go into, I'm gonna go into this assembly file here. And just for the time constraints, this particular assembly, I have already created my model states. So all I had done is I did uh, right click on the model state and I did new. So let's just go all the way into this one here. So I right click on model state, I did new, and then I created one motor, two motors, three motors. So just to show you, that's that's this motor right here. Let's zoom in a little bit here. If I double click on two motors, I have increase the size of my base plate that those motors are bolted to. I have added additional fasteners because I have that second motor. Okay, let's double click on three motor model state. And three motors, again, my base plate changes in size. My quantity of my fasteners update accordingly. So let's just kind of see how, how I uh, did that. So on the one motor, I only have the one motor and I have just a standard single base plate here. So when I click on that, you can go over here and see that this is that part, right? So I would need to open up that part in its own window. And before I created those assembly model states, I had gone into my individual components on which ones I wanted to update. And I also created model states in the part environment saying uh, one motor is just my master. In this case, I have a two motors one and three motors one. So all I did there is I activated the appropriate model state. And then from there, I went into my constraints and I set up my constraints properly, as well as the location of my first uh, spot where that motor's bolted. And then I had created a rectangular pattern. And depending on which one I'm calling out for, my pattern just changes. So uh, two motors, let's go into this pattern. It's set to two, and there's my value. Okay. Now, if I go into three motors, base plate changes in size. I also have a third spot for that motor. And go into here, and you can see it's, that's set to three, and I have my spacing of 180, right? Okay. So now, when it comes to uh, in your assembly, I have one motor selected. All that I would do here then is find that base plate, right click on that, go into representation, and then from here, now you have a new drop down from model state for the 2022 software. And then I can say, do I want that to be the one motor? In this case, it's my master, two motors or three motors. Okay. And then it goes the same with the other ones here. So again, base plate, once you have created model states for the piece part, and you can already see right after it, it's telling you which, which particular model state are you using. In this case, two motors. Representation, come in here and specify which model state you want. Uh, and then if I right click on model states in my assembly, you can also edit via the spreadsheet. Okay, so this is why I say, Create some model states, especially in the assembly environment. Create a couple model states at least, even if you're going to create, you know, eight, eight total model states. Uh, reason being is it's gonna be really hard for most users to know what header field they need to type in in order for, um, in order to, to replace all those components. Okay. Pattern. This is the field for for that pattern. So kind of hard for me to, to know what I need to type out in order to fill in my fields here. Uh, and then you have just your standard dimensions. Um, you can also suppress or unsuppress your constraints as well. So because I'm calling out two motors or three motors, then I need to either compute or not compute those various constraints. So now from here, if I really wanted to add four motors, five motors and so on, I can easily do that within my spreadsheet here. And then they would then get added to the model states uh, tree there. All right, a uh, few more things I want to show before we go into any questions that we anybody, anybody may have. Um, 
I'm going to go into this part right here and I'll show you that send to Fusion uh, feature here. So let's just say I had modeled this part and this is the com complete state here. And then I want to be able to send it to Fusion to maybe do some uh, CNC operations on it. So if I go into environments, there's a send to Fusion tool here now. So I'm going to say send to Fusion. I need to let Inventor know what folder do I want to put it in, in Fusion. Any of you that use Fusion know that there's what's called a data panel. And then your data panel has all these different project folders, right? So I'm going to select what was already defaulted, Fusion 360 practice files. I have my, my team created already. And then I'm going to override the one that we have in there and just say upload new version. And it does go pretty quick here. Once this is done, I can then go into Fusion. And if I don't have the part, if I can open it up. And that link that I had mentioned earlier, if I click on that link, you can see that there's a flag there saying, hey, there's a change to it, right? Well, really there wasn't a change because it looks like the same part, but I'm going to go back into an inventor and make a change and then I'll send it to Fusion once again. So anytime you want your Fusion model to update from any changes made to Inventor, just kind of keep in mind, you do need to send to Fusion in order for that to happen. So now that link goes away, down at the bottom, you see there's just nothing more than the link, right? So if I were to go back to Inventor, and let's maybe go into 3D model, and here's where I was talking about in the PowerPoint slide, face fill it and pull around fill it, they have their own dropdown now. When I go into the regular fill it command, you can see it looks uh, considerably different than the 2020 software. So, you know, do I want to create just individual fillets? Do something like so, right? Um, another option there is I could say, right down here, I can say apply to my entire part. And then you can say, do you want to apply it um, to all fillets or all Fillets. All fillets are all rounds. So one of them is, is all internal edges. All fillets, excuse me, all uh, rounds is all external edges. So if I zoom in on that area right here, I no longer have internal edges because I've got it set to all rounds. If I set it to all fillets, then you can see it's all internal edges. Okay. Uh, you can see there's add variable radius fillet, corner setback. So let's maybe just go into here and click there. So I could go into my corner setback then and just select at that point. And then down here for corner setback, I can adjust my values. Let's see my wig out here. Okay. So it did actually, looks like it did actually take. You saw a preview there. But I was I was doing too much there with the all rounds and all all fillets there. So let's maybe just go right back into here. I'll just do the three edges. Okay. And then from there I can go into my corner step back again and just select right there. So now I can just adjust this for the values I want. And you can see that that's what that setback does for you is you can select on a vertice that is shared by those three edges and then adjust your values accordingly to get it the, the way you want it to look. You know, this would probably be more of like a plastic part from a molded part. Right? All right, so let's close. Let's just uh, get rid of that setback. And then I'm going to uh, fill it just the entire part. And then from there, I'll send it to Fusion. And let's just see here. Might have an error with my lips here. That's fine, let's just see.
to the feature then. All right, so. All right, so I'm just going to go through and uh, add the fillets to all the edges. Um, all I didn't want to do is, is add fillets here because that's that's what was airing, airing out on me. Let's just kind of rotate it around here. Looks like I got most of the edges filleted. There's one I was missing, it looks like. All right, so there I just made a change to that part and I want to go to my environments tab, save the file out. And I'm just going to override what I had already placed in my data panel with Infusion. So I'll upload new version. Okay, so now from there, I can go right back to Fusion. There's my link again. You can also see down here on the timeline, I have that link. So you can actually right click on it and you can say get latest version, or you can just click up here or just left click. So get latest version. And then it reads what updates were done in Inventor and then updates it um, in your Fusion application. And there you go. Okay. So every time you make a change in your Inventor model, all you need to do is make sure you just send it to send it to Fusion. Uh, if you don't send it to Fusion, then if I open up the model and Fusion environment, um, I won't see that change, nor will I see that link on the timeline as well as up the top there. Uh, and I guess one last thing just to hit on is the, the Inventor and Revit thing. Um, so let's say, I go to my assembly here and I want to utilize this in the Revit environment. So what I can do there is now you can go into your file dropdown menu. And then if you do export, you can go and you say Revit, right? So now when you do that, um, Inventor will automatically, or type, it grays it out, but it's saving it as a .rbt file looks very similar to when you do that simplify operation and that is what you're doing here is simplifying it so what model state do you want to use maybe i want this to be three motor so it shows up as three motors what view rep do i want positional rep and then replace envelope how, how would i want that to look is it individual part versus each individual part being its own solid body right so maybe i'll just leave it like that uh, what folder location you want to save it in, you want to give it a name, and so on. Enable updating. So if that is selected, that's where if you anytime you make a change to your inventor model, and this assembly was already being used in your Revit application, um, Revit will be able to update that assembly with what change was made in inventor. I guess this is the first time that I tried doing an export on here, so I'm not so sure what happened there, but yeah. So, I mean, if that error didn't show up, it, it should have saved it. It probably did save it out to that folder that I, whatever folder location I specified there, but um, then I, I guess with that, um, that is it for what's new with Inventor. Um, once again, my name is Jerry Oy. Uh, if you anybody has any questions, you can reach out to us at, at any time. And uh, I guess with that, I appreciate it.